Hey, what's going on everyone? This is going to be version 2 of my How to Kayak Fish Palawan Wreck. Version 2 is going to be much more detailed and it'll give you a much better idea of what to expect when you fish Palawan Wreck. Hey, at this point, I have a quick favor to ask. If you could hit the subscribe button and maybe the like button as well, I would really appreciate that. Palawan is a shipwreck off the coast of Redondo Beach. Google Earth will tell you it is about two miles as the crow flies from the launch at King Harbor. I'm gonna zoom in here. In terms of orientation, it runs roughly from north to south. And in addition to being a fishing hotspot, it is also a popular destination for divers. So if you should happen upon a boat waving this flag, that typically means there are divers underneath, so we wanna give them plenty of leeway. So let's begin with a little bit of history about the SS Palawan. Palawan began life as a World War II repair ship. It is 441 feet long, and I think it is about 60 feet wide as well. Let's watch a little video of a Palawan dive. Clear to see, this thing is absolutely enormous. And these GPS coordinates should get you there. And again, the thing is over 400 feet long. It's gonna be hard to miss. So we're coming up on Palawan here. And even before we hit the wreck, there's a little bit of a grade up. And then you'll, we'll start seeing more and better stuff, like right there. But even if this was not Palawan, when you see something like that, it's worth a drop, for sure. Now, Palawan can be pretty tough to fish for a beginner. I'm gonna go back to the video, which illustrates just how many sharp edges there are. When I first found and started fishing Palawan, I lost probably three, four lures at a time. I mean, I was decorating Palawan like it was a Christmas tree with my 10, $12 lures. So if you want to minimize your gear loss, I'm going to make some gear recommendations. And so I call this my Palawan special. Um, I've donated way too much gear to Palawan. So if you want to minimize the gear loss, what you want to do is work a line counter reel. And this lure typically comes with a treble hook. And what I've done is I've replaced the treble hook with a siwash hook. That's not very strong. And I'll explain later why. So here you have your typical erratic fall jig. This one is six ounces and most of them ship with a treble hook as standard. The hook that you see below is a four aught siwash hook. A siwash hook will have a little bit of a gap in the eye of the hook so that you can slip it over a welded ring or a split ring and then clamp it down with a pair of pliers. Now this particular hook is not a high quality hook. It's probably like 50 cents. And I actually don't want high quality hooks. I want hooks that are gonna bend when I put a lot of pressure on them. So these hooks can probably handle the stress of a five, six pound bass, but will hopefully bend if you hook something really big like a ship. So if I'm running 50 pound braid along with 30 or 40 pound leader, I'm hoping that this hook bends or breaks before the other components do. So beside the hook, every other component needs to be kind of burly because if you hook into something, you need to wrestle it out of there before it takes you into one of the nooks and crannies. Okay. So I'm gonna paddle along and then if I see a mark, what I'm gonna do is drop and then turn my rudder and make sure that the line is completely vertical because you don't wanna be dragging an expensive lure sideways on top of a, a wreck. And then I'll turn into the wind because if you turn away from the wind, it'll blow you off the mark. And then you just monitor it. And then have your hand on the handle. So as soon as it drops, you pick it up right away so that you don't drag it and then get it hung up on something. And then what I'll do is I'll jerk quickly, twice, three, four, five and that's it if I don't get hit I'm gonna release it right back down and rinse and repeat boom one two three four five 
So what I'll do is I'll set it to zero. And if I don't want to lose gear, what I'll do is once it hits bottom, I'll make a mental note of it. So it might say like 130. And then on the next drop, I will stop it at 120. I should note that this approach is probably going to sacrifice some action because what I've noticed is you'll get a lot of hits right on that first jerk off the bottom. I think that if the fish aren't super aggressive, they will often follow the lure, the falling lure down to the bottom and then hit it when it first jerks off the bottom. It's a purely reactionary strike, I think. Okay, so at 130. So on the next drop, it'll be like 120. And I also think that having the single sidewash hook in comparison to the treble hook is also going to cost you some action. Here the fish are pretty aggressive and I get hit several times before the hookup. Not a huge fish, but... Yeah, right down here is the school of something. They're kind of up at, toward the bottom-ish. All sand bass. At this point, I'm gonna go back to Google Maps and kind of map out my strategy for fishing Palawan. So given the sheer size of Palawan, my approach isn't to set up here and stay there for 30, 40 minutes trying to fool two, three really smart fish. I employ a much more of a run and gun style of offense. So if I try three drops here and I don't get bit, I'm gonna move. So I might try two, three drops here. If I don't get hit, I'm gonna move. I'm just gonna basically zigzag back and forth and try to cover as much of the wreck as possible. And if you hustle and work hard, you will pick off fish. And because I've tipped my lure with squid, they're gonna be these pesky ocean whitefish that are messing with it. But I'm looking for that big thump thump, which will be a big sandy or a calico. So there's a school of sand bass down there, represented by those broken arches. Now I think this scene right here is pretty interesting. This is a school of sand bass, but they are acting very atypically. With sand bass, they will typically get hunkered down to structure and it's hard to get them to move up and down the water column. But we picked a good day. This is almost a no moon, so the current's going pretty good and these fish are being pretty aggressive. So they're being uh, found up and down the water column from 120 all the way to 50, which again is pretty atypical. Calicos are a little bit different. When they're in the mood, you can catch them up and down the water column. I've caught calicos right at the surface, for example. So we're looking at not big fish because we're not seeing a lot of red, but we're looking at active fish because look at the arches and again, look at the, um, the range in terms of depth. So you definitely want to drop down when you see something like this. Not huge, but... This sequence right here is pretty interesting. Just prior to the video starting, I had hooked into a really big fish, much bigger than any of the other fish in this video. And in that one second where I was futzing around with a GoPro trying to turn it on, that fish turned his head and swam into structure. So the moral of the story here is, don't give that fish even a split second to turn his head and take you into structure. Once you have them up about 20 feet out of the structure, you can pretty much relax. But the first 10, 20 feet, crucial. Damn it. 
Ah. <laughs> oh. Ah, he's gone. So there, I was lucky enough to free the lure, and it probably would not have happened if I didn't have the thigh wash hook. But ultimately, you will get some stuff hung up, and when you do, don't pull on the lure with either your reel and for sure do not wrap the braid around your hand because that stuff is super abrasive it'll cut you up what you want to do is take a little piece of wooden dowel or something like that put the reel into free spool wrap the braid around the wooden dowel and then pull on the dowel that way you don't risk wrecking your reel or your hand okay that brings us to the end of this video as always, thank you for dropping by. I appreciate you. Get out there and have fun. Be safe, and we will see you soon. Bye for now.